Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's Kendo Rant. Um, it's a bit of a short one today because I'm super strapped for time, uh, but we're going to fire through the questions right away. Uh, first one. <clears throat> Hi Andy, bit of a trivial question. In terms of ball glue, are you only allowed to have uh, black, blue, or white and red borgo. Uh, can you have colourful borgo in Shinai, for example? Green Shinai, yellow borgo. I'm just curious, thanks. Okay, uh, there's nothing in the rules that say you can't wear different coloured borgo or use different coloured Shinai and stuff like that. Um, just looks a bit silly. Um, really, the borgo is traditionally navy blue um, <clears throat> with uh, obviously the red uh, paint on the inside. Um, and all, also, there is uh, some white borgo that's uh, become popular, uh, particularly amongst women. Um, I have seen several other kind of different colours out there. I've seen red ones, I've seen like a uh, like green weird colored ones and stuff uh, and I know recently like uh, some black ones as well like the actual fabrics black um, to be honest I think no one's gonna take you seriously if you wear something like that so um, you won't find it on Kendall Star um, but you know if you really wanna if you really wanna you know uh, look different then it's it's one way of doing it I guess but um, you know, I'd, if if you really want to kind of be individual, I'd choose a different coloured door, maybe different embroidery, stuff like that, rather than thinking about a literally different coloured borgo. Uh, because, yeah, it, it kind of looks a bit a bit dumb. Okay, next. Um, I have a bit of a off-topic question. Did the samurai ever do any side cuts or upward cuts? Haven't been able to find anything other than downward cuts and downward cuts at an angle. Um, I don't know, because uh, I don't know any samurai, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not an expert on uh, Kenjutsu or anything like that, or Kodi or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure that there were some upwards cuts. I think uh, I've been told before that Wakigamai that we use in Kendo Kata was actually originally for kind of cuts from below like this, so I'm sure that they did exist, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it demonstrated in some of the uh, Kodi demonstrations that I've seen over the years. Um, so, although I wouldn't be prepared to say definitely yes. Um, I, I get the feeling that I'm sure that it existed in several forms of Kenjutsu or Koryu. Um, okay, next, I just took third dan, in, third dan in Osaka at the end of October. Fantastic. Uh, pass rates of Keiko in the third dan group for all ages was less than one third of the applicants. What's the pass rates like in your area compared to Japan? Well, uh, generally, in my experience, the pass rate for lower grades like Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, um, yeah, those, particularly those three, is actually lower here in, certainly in the UK than in Japan, like, um, in my experience. Um, I often thought that they were quite strict on it, especially like third dan here, because there's not many people of that level comparatively. Um, so it's considered something of a, a sort of high grade, um, when in Japan it's considered a, a, a low grade. Um, so yeah, the, the, this kind of standard for judging it seems to be a little bit different. Um, so yeah, a third is probably a little bit more than probably what you see for third dan um, in lots of sort of European countries, I expect. Um, but of course, it depends on the actual grade in itself. Could be well wrong. Somebody hit me up with some facts. There's, uh, there's statistics out there, I'm sure. I just haven't had time to sit and look at them. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's just my sort of impression. Uh, next, uh, when an ippon was given by two shimpan and one opposes, uh, the one who opposes would normally just wave off the point. How would the correct procedure afterwards be, as sometimes I see them raising up the flag as well, after having seen there are already two flags up and the point was given, sometimes Shinpan just let the flag down, uh, just leave the flag down, I guess you mean. Uh, I know it may differ from country to country, but does the ICAF or AJCAF have any standardi standardised rules on that? Yes, there are standardised rules on it, okay? If you're a Shinpan, your job is to judge whether you think there is a Yuko Datotsu or not. Okay, so you have your flags. When you see a Yuko Datotsu, you signal for the Yuko Datotsu. If you uh, see a Waza that you don't think was the Yuko good enough to be qualified as Yuko Datotsu, but the other two think that it is, and they put their flags up, then you have the, um, the right, I guess, you have the, uh, the position to disagree by waving the flags like this. If the, or you do this as well if just one flag goes up, okay? So if one of the other shimpan uh, sort of submits their opinion on whether it's Yuko Datotsu, you then must submit yours. You either must agree or you must disagree, okay? Uh, the third option is you can abstain and say, I didn't see it. And that's the only time in which your vote, vote actually doesn't count. Um, now, in the case where two shimpan put it up, 
and you decide it's not, or one shin fan decides it's not good enough for you, Kota Tutsu, and they then wave the flags across like this and say no, their correct procedure is then to return the flags to their side and leave their flags down, okay? That's the correct procedure if they um, believe that that wasn't Yuko Datotsu. It's, it's a common mistake for less experienced Shinpan to um, disagree and then see the other two have gone up so they then also join them. Um, it doesn't need to have three points to be awarded, uh, awarded as Ippon. Um, it just needs two. <laughs> uh, it needs a majority is actually what the rules say. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's okay though to change your mind. Okay, but it's unusual to change your mind by going, no, oh yes, okay then. That's unusual. What you do sometimes see is, ah, uh, no, that's not so good. First you think it was okay and then decide actually, no, it's not. That's more common and more appropriate, okay? Uh, but yeah, if you see the other two put their flag up, and you don't think it was good enough, then you keep your flags down. You, you, you give your opinion first by crossing them like this and then you put them down. Uh, that is the standard IKF uh, format. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kendo Tabi? I have hard calluses on my left foot that dried up and somehow opened into a wound. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> hate when that happens. <laughs> uh, I used to frequently injure my right heel doing Fumikomi, so I wear heel protection until the bruise healed, so I could keep practicing and fix my form. Uh, I'd like to use a Tabi for the front of my left foot for the same reason. Uh, I was a beginner and got, when I was a beginner and got blisters, uh, sorry, I'm talking really fast again, but I'm, on, I'm sort of against the clock, so um, put it on half speed if you can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially with my accent. Um, I remember wrapping up my foot with athletic tape, uh, which I recall to be very slippery, uh, uncomfortably tight or just fall off during practice. Uh, the wound is small and doesn't hurt much, but it is uncomfortable. I don't know what, uh, I don't want to keep exposing it to the dojo floor. I don't know much about kendo tabby and how useful they are slash dangers in using them. Okay, uh, it sounds like a great idea. Um, it's perfectly fine to use kendo tabby uh, if you have such a, such a, um, a wound or injury um, and yeah you don't want to be getting dirt in it and stuff like that you don't want to get infected and all that sort of gross stuff so definitely um, the, the the perfectly acceptable um, tool for Kendall um, the best not used to kind of um, prevent you getting this sort of harder skin on your feet um, you know because it's, it's possible to use them as a crutch, because if you, if you stand with your left foot pointing this way, it's very easy to get blisters on the bottom of your foot, and if you just wear a tabby and then just keep doing this, then you'll never get any better. Um, but if you're in the situation like what you're saying, where you've actually normally don't wear it, but you've got an injury or you've got some sort of problem with your foot, and you'd like, you need to wear it just while you get sort of healed, uh, I think that's totally acceptable. Um, and yeah, there's, there's no, you know, like I say, the danger in using it is, is when you fall into using it as a crutch and you don't actually work on fixing your footwork. Uh, next one. After class one day, my left foot was feeling a little sore, uh, which I ignored just as a minor annoyance after practice. Uh, but my next practice, I could barely push off on it. I had to sit out, uh, the end of class in a bit of pain. After this, I took off several weeks to let it heal. I even saw a doctor who didn't do anything, and, I w and it was feeling better. However, whenever I practice Kendall, the pain starts to return. Doing any sort of push-off with my left foot starts to hurt. The pain is at the ball of my foot, just below where my toes are. Uh, it's clearly related to Kendall, and it's making practice difficult. It feels like it heals, but it comes back during class. Do you have any experience with injuries such as this? Uh, Am I doing something wrong in my practice? I've been focused on, I have been focusing on my footwork and trying to keep my feet close together to prevent me from lifting my heel too high, which may have been a cause. Um, just wondering if you had any insight. Um, you know, you, you actually, just before you wrote this question, you did write, I appreciate you're not a doctor or something like that. And that's something I'd certainly stress. I don't really know how to answer these sort of medical questions. I'm definitely not uh, qualified for it. You're probably correct in that it's, the cause of it is something to do with your footwork. Um, and it's probably come from your having your left heel either too high or too flat. Um, probably too high, but um, yeah, uh, the best thing, the only thing I can really advise to you is, I know you said you saw a doctor, but maybe there's a sort of physio or something that you can talk to. Um, there must be somebody that knows something a bit about it um, that can certainly help you. I had a similar thing in my right foot actually a few years ago. Uh, whilst I was in Japan, I had to see several doctors, ended up having a um, like an ultrasound scan on it, funny enough, um, to find out that I'd actually torn some of the ligaments in the bottom of my foot. Um, doing like a dodgy Fumikomi or something. Um, 
Yeah. He... Mm. I think you need to kind of just really focus on uh, getting your footwork sorted out. Um, and try and just find somebody that can give you a little bit of insight on it. And in the meantime, just take it easy and don't do anything that's going to make it worse. By all means, go to practice, but you might have to just calm down on what you're doing so that you don't uh, sort of make it uh, any worse, because that's the worst thing you want to do. Okay, it's so the last one. I've really fired through these today. I know that, but um, I, <laughs> I am... Uh, I am uh, a bit pushed for time. We had a bumper episode last time. Last one was a mega rant. Okay, so maybe this one's a mini rant. Okay, next. Uh, I've been wondering what you, uh, what do you think is the best oil to do Shinai maintenance? I usually use Peroba oil or canola oil. Um, <laughs> but even so, the Shinai oils vary so much from what they're made of, and some don't even say which it is. Uh, thanks in advance. Yeah, I mean, you can buy uh, Shinai oil. I'm not sure if we've got them up on Kendo Star at the minute. I don't think so, because there's a little bit of shipping issues with some of these Shinai, you know, like sending liquids and oils and stuff. They don't like us sending them to some countries and stuff. Um, but I mean, I can get them. We've got them definitely. Uh, if I'm totally honest with you, like I'm, <laughs> I tend to, I tend to use like quite cheap stuff that I get from the supermarket, um, like like vegetable oil sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, probably it's not the best thing. I'm sure there's better stuff that you can use. It works alright for me. I know I've noticed in the comments on this. This was on the Kendo Show Early Access page by the way if you're not on that page it's the Facebook group there's a link in the description uh, get in it because it's a really great place to have discussions about Kendall um, I noticed some people talked about like uh, WD-40 um, which if you if you've got it in your country yeah maybe maybe that works I've, I've never used that myself um, but you know I've heard people do it um, and yeah like I said I mean there's, there's like uh, like in Japan uh, wal walnut oil is quite popular um, and uh, like the most expensive stuff is called like a uh, tsubaki oil, which is like a, a from a pol polonia tree or something. Um, they use it in shampoo a lot over there, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of I just kind of stick with the cheap stuff on it myself. Um, you know, just uh, obviously like like I say, I I tend to use like vegetable oil, but I don't I don't put loads on. Just like I just put a nice sort of thin coat on and then sort of wipe it off and let it dry and I just keep doing that and it works alright for me but you know your mileage may vary as they say <laughs> um, so yeah that's the end of the questions I hope that helped um, I did want to um, have a bit more of a rant but I haven't quite got time today but I'll try and put something up tomorrow as well um, I certainly will later this week and um, these books are coming back in stock soon I am. Uh, <laughs> I've had them sent over to us from the uh, the the old Japan Kendo Federation, but they've been sort of waylaid somewhere in the process. I think the the postal service here in the UK uh, did a brilliant job of delivering it to the wrong address. So we're just uh, we're just trying to track them down <laughs> so we can uh, we can get them back up online because I know there's a lot of you that want them. Um, don't forget as well, kendostar.com is where you need to be doing your shopping. We've just launched the holiday sale. Um, you definitely want to check that out. Um, I know we've always got sort of deals and sales going on uh, at Kendo Star. This one's a pretty good one. I know it's off the back of Black Friday. Uh, that, there were some really good deals there. We've actually brought some of those deals back through to the holiday sale, but there's more as well. I think we've discounted every single burger set this time. Um, so literally all the burger on Kendo Star is currently, uh, the burger sets are actually currently discounted. Um, the, the deal on the uh, Gaia Hakama as well, I want to point that out. You get the Gaia Hakama with the free Blue Moon Kendogi. Uh, we've had that on now for a couple of months um, and it's been super popular. And then it's obvious why, because as soon as you see the Gaia Hakama, they're really, really awesome. Um, but this is, this is where it ends, all right? So once the 28th of December comes around, we're finishing the deal on the, uh, the Blue Moon, the free Blue Moon uh, Ken Dorgi with the Gaia Hakama. So if you want one of those, now's the time to do it. Um, the Shinai and stuff, there's all sorts of cool stuff. So get over to uh, kendostar.com and check out the, the holiday sale. Like I said, it ends on the 28th of December. Um, other than that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the social stuff you know what to do by now. <laughs> uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like me to rant about next time. Uh, do whatever it is. It doesn't matter what you're thinking about. It's, you know, I'll, I'll definitely do my best to answer all the questions that I get. Um, whatever they're about. Um, so, yeah, uh, within reason, of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, leave, a, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. I think I've said it all now. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.